Cycling Business School, we have a guest, Simon Kulhen. Simon is currently working as a CEO of CISI, that is Charter Institute of Securities and Investment. Today, uh, Simon has spent good uh, whole day at ITM Business School imparting his global knowledge to student as well as faculty. Simon, thank you so much for coming and spending the whole day. Very nice to be here. You've got a lovely, lovely campus and great students. So thank you so much, Simon. So just a little background about Simon. Simon has spent a good number of years in financial sector. Uh, Simon, my first question then is, is something related to UK market because you know, uh, from the uh, time when they had, you know, separated from the Brexit market, right, it has been pointed out that when, what is the future of UK? So what is your view on UK market? I mean, is that you feel that it's really strong? Or is well, the UK market is, is, I think the word we'd say is surprisingly resilient. Um, I think a lot of people were fearful, uh, myself included, that we would see a big drop off. But in fact, following the EU vote to leave uh, in March last year, but in fact, the opposite has happened. Uh, the economy has been extremely strong. The service sector has um, sprung back to life. Unemployment is the lowest it's been. Uh, we have a little bit of inflation, mainly caused actually by the um, depreciation of sterling. Uh, and as a result, we, uh, the Bank of England raised the interest rates just last week. So they, I think they raised the interest rates for a couple of reasons, actually. One, because the economy can handle it. Two, because there is a little inflationary spike. But three, I think that it's a bit like an aeroplane. The governor needs to have a little bit of ammunition. But Simon, uh, it has been also observed that you know UK UK is uh, you know not having a robustic man. It is not a robustic man. You know manufacturing hub, right? No, it hasn't been for years. Yes, right. And even if you see the population size in UK, it is not very high, right? So how you feel that you know this growth will be continue for a long period of time, or it is just a sudden spike in the economy? No, no, the economy has changed over the last forty years from manufacturing to, to services. And we still do manufacturing, actually. It's a, it's a misnomer to think the UK doesn't do manufacturing. What it does do is very high-end manufacturing. Yeah. Simon, you have been uh, associated with CSA for almost, uh, you know, since 2004, right? Uh, I mean, I had met with few corporates also in India, uh, whether it's JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, State Street. And I found that their employees have been encouraged to take uh, CSA certification, right? So those were what That's right, yeah. Right? And another thing is how this certification will increase the employability of this uh, young crowd. Because you see, even in India, there are a lot of organizations who have came out with the research that India is an educated country, right? But at the same time, financial literacy among those educated people also is very low. So how CISS certification will make such kind of professional so that they can actually go in the market and make sure that you know, there should not be a mis-selling, there should be a correct kind of uh, 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 planning note to be given to the to the people. So how CISI uh, will going to play an important role? Because CISI is already there in India from last almost 15, 20 years. Okay, let's answer this in two yeah. ways. Um, there is, uh, when people come out of school and university, employers say they're okay, but I now need to teach them everything. So education in schools and universities generally does not make people fit to work in the finance sector. It's far too specialist. Unless you've got a finance degree from ITM, well, that might help you. But, you know, it's far too specialist. So there are all sorts of elements. So if you're going to be a lawyer or an accountant, you go and take lawyering exams, accounting exams. If you're going to work in the finance sector, you take specialist finance exams. So CISI exams are in two or three areas. So there's the JP Morgans, Morgan Stanleys, and others. They, in, in India particularly, use them for operation roles. And they've used them throughout the world. So this is basically applying the same standards globally. So if you want to go and work in uh, our operations, which is uh, well paid and plenty of jobs there, and you have got a CISI qualification, you're going to be ahead of the queue. Because the first thing that people will say is, well, I now need to teach you those qualifications. So if you come with one, you are ahead. You're well above what the others will. So it's quite a good arrangement to get the first one done at university. Because when you put your CV out there, you're going to have an advantage. Simple as that. So that's the... That's the first step, and I know you're doing the, the first exam here at, at ITM. That's a real exam that gives you real credit, when you're, certainly when you're applying to some of those big names. Just to give you a small uh, background about uh, India's economic condition and progress, I'll tell you that uh, you know the economy in India is very stable right now. At the same time, our stock market is still in the bullish phase. Uh, mutual fund is one area where a lot of fund is coming now from the households, right? So now the trend is changing and people are, you know, having the confidence on stock market, mutual funds, derivatives and all the other asset classes. Mm. So mm. do you think that it will be a good thing for CISI also to impart, to be aggressive in Indian market also? Well, I wouldn't, say, I wouldn't say aggressive, but I mean, 
the point the point about investments for retail and retail market is that generally speaking the for the ordinary person in the street mutual funds are good things to do regular sustained savings i raise my eyebrows when people are into derivatives that's not regular sustained savings but sustained savings in a regular balanced fund is great um there's you know every individual is is uh, different you wouldn't put all your proverbial eggs in one basket and think there's a certainly a right role for fixed income I mean, people say you should put three to six months money in a fixed income and then you should put some more money for long-term savings regularly each month into some sort of mutual and um, which you can take out but uh, mutual funds uh, you can't take them out as easy as you can with a fixed term deposit so it's a balance what is required though is much more financial literacy and much more financial advice um, you still have a commission structure here you see commissions and we're not fans of commissions commissions actually don't align the same objectives for the salesman as they do for the customer so if you have people being paid on retention and performance, that's a lot better than on initial sales. So I, I see India changing a lot, actually, and a lot for the better, too. So, Simon, thank you very much for your all insights.